what do you what do you say to people who say, you know what, I understand all of that, but I just really like the taste of alcohol, you know, a really good glass of wine with the right meal. For me, you know, it's a culinary experience. It's about the taste. What's the where where are those people maybe misunderstanding alcohol and the flavor of alcohol? So 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 alcohol as a chemical is repugnant to human beings and that's not that's not a question of taste that's true for everyone there's no one that can sniff neat alcohol without their eyes watering and without shying away from it if you try and taste neat alcohol it, it, it will make you vomit you will wretch it's absolutely foul the only way we can take the drug is by diluting it in water and adding an awful lot of refined sugar to it um, and that's basically what you end up with wine and beer now, going back to a point about the subconscious, now, nobody, when they first drink alcohol, likes the taste of it. You know, if you see youngsters drinking, it's foul. And I certainly remember the first time I tried beer or wine, it's just like, oh, that, it's absolutely horrible. But you kind of persevere with it. It's a very interesting thing. And sometimes it's easier to think of with smoking and vaping. Okay, so when you smoke or vape with nicotine in it, there's this, if, similar to alcohol, but obviously the other end of the scale, it's a stimulant rather than a sedative. So what happens is a lot of people, when they first smoke or even vape, they cough, okay? And that's their body's natural reaction to breathing in a poisonous um, gas is to cough. It's your body forcibly exhaling what is in the lungs as quickly as possible. But what happens after, immediately after that is quite interesting because some of the nicotine from the smoke will have got into the lungs and it will have hit the bloodstream. And the immediate result of that is we feel more alert and awake. So again, the subconscious does that very narrow perception. Well, what's happened here? Okay, we breathed in some smoke or vape that we thought was poisonous, but actually we feel pretty good for it because we now feel quite alert and awake. So the next time you go and do it, the body won't kick in with the cough mechanism because it starts to perceive the inhaling of smoke as a good thing or the inhaling of vape as a good thing because it make, makes you feel immediately better. That's what happens with alcohol. It's the same with taste. We can adapt our taste to different things. People often talk about, you know, an acquired taste. All an acquired taste is if you persevere with something long enough and your body gets a perceived benefit from it, you will start to get used to and eventually enjoy that taste. So again, that's a basic survival mechanism. There aren't many creatures on the planet whose food supply is safe enough that they might not at some point have to adapt to another food type. And that's, you know, that, that's a basic thing. We have hunger. So the more hungry you get, the more desperate you are. And eventually you'll eat anything. You'll experiment with different things. Now, if you eat something that may taste foul, but actually it does have some nutritional value, immediately afterwards you'll start to feel slightly better. So your brain has this thing where if you consume something and you feel good for it, you'll start to change your belief or change your perception of that taste. And that's what happens with alcohol. You know, I've already talked about how it creates that feeling of anxiety. You have another one and it relieves that feeling of anxiety. So that's how your brain starts to approach. You start to think, well, hang on, this glass of wine, for example, that I thought was foul, actually makes me feel a lot better therefore there's nutritional value in it therefore i'll change my perception of it because it's an interesting thing we often say to children you know your taste buds change over time nobody's taste buds change taste is a chemical reaction between the food and receptors in your tongue nothing changes the only thing that can change is how your brain interprets that it reminds me there was a um i think this is a tweet there's a guy named orrin hoffman who is an aunt who's a silicon valley entrepreneur but he tweeted something to to the extent of like wine is the ultimate long con and it really makes me wonder if like the fine wine industry and it's hard to say because i've had these enjoyable tasting dinners and like you know i've got people in my life who i love and respect who really who really love wine but it really makes me wonder like is it all bullshit like is it is it, it's this story and there's, you know, so you're telling the story about the wine and the brand and, and the way in which it pairs with the food and then you're drinking the wine and you're getting this immediate, this positive benefit from, from the wine. 
But ultimately, at the end of the day, like it's all bullshit. It's just like somebody mixed up. They took some grape juice. They fermented it to give you that feeling. They, you know, they made it in such a way that they've masked the taste of the alcohol. Yeah, yeah. And not only have they masked it just in terms of like what you're putting in your mouth, but they're masking it with this elaborate story of where it came from and, you know, the vines and what the temperature was and how the season was. And, you know, I, I wonder if we just wipe all that way. And it's like, actually, it's just, it's all total bullshit. I'm sure you could get a different flavor from different types of amphetamine if you if you wanted to. It wouldn't necessarily be something you want to indulge in too often, though. And then what about this notion that, look, I, um, life is hard. I've, you know, something has happened in my life that's really difficult or something happened to me as a child. And... You know, I just, I struggle to cope with that. Like for me, alcohol is a good way to just get away from that for a few moments. It's really nice. I'm going through a hard time. And, you know, for me, alcohol is actually helpful for that. What What's the response to that? What, the, what we need to remember is with alcohol, it creates a feeling of sedation followed by a feeling of anxiety, okay? So if you've got a problem that's this big and you have a drink, it goes to this big, but when it wears off, it's this big, okay? And for people who are listening, I, like, I'm, I'm moving my hands here, but you, your problem is a certain size. You drink alcohol and it shrinks, and then when it wears off, it doubles and quadruples. There's lots and lots of ways you can deal, you know, whether it's trauma, mental health issues, there's lots and lots of ways you, you know, you, you can see therapy you can take medication and i'm talking about you know properly prescribed medication you can go to cbt there's lots and lots of options alcohol and drugs as options should be right down the bottom of the scale because one there's that dynamic where although it has the immediate effect of seemingly shrinking the problem it then exacerbates it massively when it wears off and of course the other massive thing we've just talked about is how Im alcohol impacts sleep and the knock-on effect on your mental health for that alone is massive. So if you have got something that you are grappling with, the absolute worst, one of the worst things you can possibly do is, is destroy your ability to get natural and restorative sleep. You're doing yourself a massive disfavor with it. You, you may find it's immediately helpful, but my very strong advice would be find another way of managing it because, as I say, alcohol and other drugs should be way down the bottom of the list of options for you. They're only going to make it worse. And it seems there's probably some delay in the processing of the issue that, you know, there's some certain amount of sober, like, acceptance and understanding and, you know, just kind of like, cognitively dealing with whatever the problem is and that 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 process is paused when you're using and so you're like delaying the time to kind of getting through the the processing of the issue but in any case you're never you're not going to find any uh, psychologist or therapist or psychiatrist who's going to say hey you know for your particular circumstances i think alcohol is going to be pretty helpful for you and yeah. in there's, there's an interesting dynamic here where you find people who are going through the grieving process so there, there is a very specific and recognized psychological process that you go through with grieving. And obviously, it's the extent of it is different from individual to individual, but the actual mechanics of it remains the same. Um, and it can take longer or less time, depending on how the person's affected and all the rest of it. But what you find is when they drink alcohol, they never go through that process because in preventing themselves being able to sleep, which is when your brain assimilates and um, absorbs a lot of information and experiences, and just through anesthetizing through it, you actually stop yourself being able to go through the process. So although, you know, if you lose someone very close to you, life is never quite the same without them, but you eventually get to a point of acceptance and being able to get on with your life. When people drink, they never get there. It's as raw today as it was four years ago. And, and that is not natural. That's not a healthy thing to do at all. You're actually elongating the entire thing and stopping yourself being able to get to come to terms with it.